Hello folks, for those who want Samsung's latest flagship smartphone at the lowest price, there is the Galaxy S22. For those who want the best of the best, there is the Galaxy S22 Ultra. This begs the question, who is the Galaxy S22 Plus for? The position of this model is not simple, it should give something more than the base model and at the same time not go into ultra territory. Let's try to figure out what is the meaning of this model and what are its difference from its siblings. It must be said right away that the new Galaxy S22 Plus fits better in the hand than last year's model. It feels like a solid piece of glass and metal. Samsung has leaned much more on a minimalistic aesthetic this time around. It has less rounded backs, flatter and sharper rounded edges, flat display. The S22 is still rounded and curvy in a few key aspects, just not as curvy as the S21. Gorilla Glass Victus Plus protects both the front and rear of the device. The S22 Plus is very well made and looks exceptional solid. The body on the S22 Plus has the standard IP68 ingress protection rating we have come to expect from Samsung's flagships. Samsung retains the contour cut design for the camera housing. It's an absolute joy to look at those clean chamfered edges on the rear camera module. Great accuracy. In terms of design, the Galaxy S22 Plus has nothing to complain about. It looks great and it feels premium in the hand. Like its predecessor, the Galaxy S22 Plus features a flat 6.6 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display with a maximum Full HD Plus resolution and a variable 48 to 120 Hz refresh rate depending on what you're looking at. This enables the device to conserve battery life. I emphasize these slim and most importantly symmetrical bezels. This definitely attracts attention. Bravo Samsung. The top and bottom bezels are even thinner than on the Ultra model. The display itself is in a league of its own. The panel is noticeably brighter. The Galaxy S20 21 Plus could reach peak brightness of 1300 nits, while the Galaxy S22 Plus bumps that up to an impressive 1750 nits. There is another interesting aspect regarding how brightness control works on the S22 Plus and the entire S22 lineup. Samsung has added a separate display option called Extra Brightness. It only works with auto brightness turned off. It is meant to unlock some extra manual brightness on the slider. According to Samsung, this way we can reach 1200 needs. Outdoor visibility is improved significantly as a result. The quality of the panel is just excellent. You get colors that appear true to life with punchy contrast. The viewing angles are also great. When you couple that with the high refresh rate, there's not much else you need out of the display. The S22 Plus uses an under-display ultrasonic fingerprint reader. These sensors have also come a long way since their original inception. They have grown in size and improved their performance. Performance. On the S22 Plus, the sensor is very accurate and fast enough in the first weeks of testing. The Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus received some pretty big camera changes. The biggest new addition is the 50 megapixels main camera, replacing the 12 megapixels camera used in previous flagship phones. And you get a proper 3x zoom lens instead of a 64 megapixels digital zoom. The main sensor is Samsung ISACEL GN5, not the biggest sensor Samsung has ever made, it is still notably bigger than that in the S21 Plus. The GN5 combines 4 pixels into one and produces 12.5 megapixels photos by default. It is quite wide camera at 24 mm. In terms of extra features, it has dual pixel PDF and optical image stabilization. The other new camera on the Galaxy S22 Plus is the 10 megapixels with 3x optical zoom. The camera also has optical image stabilization and PDF. The camera app is the same you'd find on every Samsung phone these days. Swiping left and right will switch between all available modes. Vertical swipes in either direction will switch between front and rear cameras. All cameras support night mode. There is also a pro mode which now works across all cameras, including the telephoto which was previously not the case. Now let's get to some actual camera samples. The main camera produces solid pictures in all kinds of lighting conditions, with plenty of detail in both bright and dark areas of the scene and colors that are pleasing and mostly similar to what you see with your actual eyes. But sometimes there are distortions in more saturated shades. These photos are not without issues. Sometimes you need to take two or three extra shots to 
to get a better, sharper result, but overall this is flagship grade photos. The main camera on the S22 Plus can shoot in its full 50 megapixels resolution as well. It takes a few extra moments to produce a still, but it's still quite snappy. 50 megapixels shots look quite similar to the regular 12 megapixels one in pretty much every aspect like colors and dynamic range. However, this mode has an interesting detail enhancer feature. What it offers is a more sophisticated AI driver picture stacking that combines multiple shots to resolve the most detail possible. And I must say the results are impressive. The extra detail is there as promised while also maintaining consistency in other quality aspects. Moving on to the other interesting new camera on the S22 Plus and S22 this year, the 10 megapixel 3x telephoto. Photos are also saved in 12 megapixels resolution, which means some upscaling at play which isn't ideal, but Samsung has been doing this for years now. Anyway, at its native 3x optical zoom, the new 10 megapixels telephoto captures very sharp and detailed photos, impressively so, in fact. Noise is kept at a minimum, colors look great and are well matched to the main camera. Even at 30x digital zoom, shots remain impressively usable. Sure, the work of the software is visible, even so, these shots are perfectly usable. The 12 megapixels ultrawide camera is carried forward from the S21 generation with fixed focus. The S22 Ultra is the only one out of the S22 Trio that gets autofocus on the ultrawide, and the same was true from the S21 Ultra last year. That unfortunately also means that the S22 Plus skips on the ability to capture macro shots with the ultrawide. But still, you get mostly good daylight images, colors look great and match the main and telephoto cams very well. Both noise and over sharpening are visible, but far from excessive. Finally, let's talk about selfies. The 10 megapixel selfie camera has not been upgraded for the S22 and S22 Plus this year, which means Samsung thinks it's good enough not to upgrade, and I have to agree with that. Selfies are very good. It continues to impress with its very detailed and sharp shots. The autofocus works consistently well. Dynamic range is great too. Portrait mode for the selfies is a bit inferior to the main camera, but still does a fine job. The night mode on the S22 Plus is impressive, the camera has excellent level of detail. Dynamic range again is also great. Noise levels, while not perfect, are very good too, but the colors sometimes go into pink shades and the darker it is, the more it shows up. Maybe they'll fix it with updates. The Galaxy S22 Plus can capture up to 4K at 60fps video across all of its cameras. The main camera can actually go beyond that and capture 8K 24fps, but I haven't really found anyone who needs it. The 4K footage from the main camera on the S22 Plus is impressive all around. Detail is solid and sharp. Colors are generally true to life. Dynamic range is also nice and wide. However, video recording in low light did not impress me. If there is enough light, then everything is fine. Detail is good and so is dynamic range. But when you shoot something darker, the camera can no longer cope with the noise. And finally, a few words about the S22 S22 Plus camera in comparison with the S22 Ultra, since in many ways this is the defining difference between these smartphones. Well, according to my feelings, the difference between the main cameras isn't big, but still I would prefer the Ultra camera. It often gets more accurate colors, is less aggressive and a little more detailed. But that doesn't mean the S22 Plus has a bad camera, no, it's on a flagship level, for sure. You must understand that talking about the camera is to some extent a matter of taste, there is no doubt that the S22 Plus has a flagship camera, the S22 Ultra has a different one, a little better in my opinion, yes, but nothing critical. My Galaxy S22 Plus came with an Exynos 2200 chipset paired with 8GB of RAM. Apps and games are quick to launch, the device doesn't get bogged down during multitasking and even the best mobile games can be played with ease. The Galaxy S22 Plus is capable of handling almost everything that you can throw at a smartphone at this day and age. It does that without overheating significantly, and that's a testament to its good thermal management capability, or the throttling of apps as has been discovered recently. Overall, the Galaxy S22 Plus delivers excellent performance. To be honest, I wanted to be able to choose at least 12GB of RAM, that would have future-proofed it a bit, although the system allows you to add some virtual memory. But you know, it is not the same as RAM. The Galaxy S22 Plus shifts with 
Android 12 out of the box and One UI 4.1. Compared to One UI 4.0, there have been some cosmetic improvements to refresh the look and feel of the UI. It all works very well. I didn't encounter any glitches or bugs. Samsung has also committed to providing 4 years of Android OS upgrades for the Galaxy S22 Plus. This ensures that the device is supported until Android 16. It will also get 5 years of security updates. This level of software support is unmatched in the Android world and that's a big reason why the new Galaxy S22 series is so appealing. The audio quality seems to be better compared to its predecessor. The dual speakers achieve more clarity. The speakers do get nice and loud which is always helpful since we consume so much media content on our devices now. It was a surprise when the Galaxy S22 Plus was confirmed to feature 4,500 mAh battery. It is smaller than the Galaxy S21 Plus's 4800 mAh battery. Perhaps the company is relying on more energy efficient components inside the smartphone. The device can provide a screen on time of around 7 hours, which is easily enough for the whole day on a single charge. However, if you do push the device hard, you'd see those figures change. An hour of play will drain the smartphone by 20%. The smartphone supports 45 watts charging. The S21 Plus could only do 25 watts. But if you think that the Galaxy S22 Plus would charge at almost twice the speed, that's not really true. The difference to a full charge between 25 and 45 watts is about 10 minutes. And yes, as you might have expected, there's no charger in the box. Comparing the regular Galaxy S22 to the S22 Plus mostly comes down to size and of course price. The S22 Plus has notably bigger 6.6 inch display that does get brighter. Its body is proportionally bigger and houses a bigger battery. The S22 Plus also gets ultra wide band support. Other than that, the two phones are basically identical both inside and outside. And all you have to do to choose between S22 and S22 Plus is choose your size and or budget. When you look at the S22 Plus, you might think some of its specs should have been better. More RAM, a higher res display, a micro SD slot would all be nice to have. But going back to the beginning of our video. The S22 Plus shouldn't go into S22 Ultra territory, so it doesn't have a mission to perform at its best. Instead, Samsung has focused on the essentials for the average user, and in my opinion, it worked out. S22 Plus is a smartphone for a very wide range of people. It's versatile, with a large screen and amazing build quality. It will serve faithfully for many years, although I personally find the base S22 a little more interesting. Check my review of the smaller version at the link in the description to see why. What do you think of Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus? Share your impressions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, good luck to all!